of my first jobs was on the mosque with the father and family. And he used, father used to cut the peat and I used to help him take the top sod off as they called it and put it in the ditch to keep the moss level. Then he'd come to stacking. Then he used to have the planks across the gutters and wheel these barrows and stack them into stacks about 12 feet high. That was a family job. They, they were loading barrows and we were wheeling them onto the, the bit where we stacked them on the middle of the gutters. So it was quite some job. And then we were bitten with midges, so we used to put dimp on our faces to stop the, stop the midges biting. We used to get up maybe four o'clock in the morning to try and beat the heat. But you had to work hard when it was dry because if it was wet you couldn't work. The planks were slippy and um, you just had to play safe. Peat moss, there were a lot of railway lines to bring the peat in the bogies down from the moss. And these bogies were pulled by small railway engines, um, mostly Rust and Bucyrus. Now, these locomotives used to run up and down the peat moss on the railway lines to bring the moss down to the mill. The railway lines, there were two men employed full time keeping the railway lines up to scratch because as you can imagine the peat moss was soggy and uh, the railway, they were like mini, real miniature railways and the sleepers used to sink and, they, and so they always had to be kept up to scrap. Uh, bird nests and stuff like that used to be very Roman Lightfoot was one of the instigators regarding bird nesting. You know, the little chicken boxes, they used to get chickens in. And we used to go walking up the railway line. This was when the trains were running out of course. And we'd be walking up the line sometimes and talking away, talking away to one another. And you'd look back, there's a train in the line. You'd be amazed how quiet they were. You could just hear a tinkle in the line. You look back and the train was probably, you know, things like that we used to do. We did have some very rare birds, exactly. Tree creepers, uh, kestrels, kestrel hawk, sparrow hawk, uh, swans, uh, curly ears, all these moss birds. We used to walk over the moss, pick, get curly ears eggs, ghouls eggs, skylarks, and uh, stuff like that. We had a quite a good collection, actually. Yeah, it was, it was interesting because that sort of thing we were interested in at the time. We don't seem to have the same interest now, but I suppose the birds are still there, but mostly by the shore, I think. I mean, the fields like he used to because of the modern type farming. You're always in Sally's fields that early on nests are there and probably mm. get ruins. It's rather a difficult time for the birds in that respect like. to swim in the docks and also when we um, were young we used to uh, meet the tide at the west end of the jetty. We used to wait until we saw the, the bore wave coming down. It wasn't a, a strong bore wave as it goes right up the channel but we waited for this minor wave that came into the dock and we used to stand waiting for it until it was deep enough to swim and then we just used to lie back and float around with it into the pool at the front. We also used to wait until the stony island in the middle was covered with water and swim across to the, the jetty again, jumping off the steps. 
We really enjoyed that and it made you a strong swimmer. In 1952, things were starting to improve on the farm, but we had a 40 cow bio built, and then rather later, then we expanded to this 40 buyer, which was a great thing. We still lived the milk in, in units and brought to an inch churn cooler, but it was a big improvement and a lot faster. Um, later on we had a milk round and then when we bought another farm at Colbeck I had to do it so I had it about seven years round by Anthorn and Cardon and Bonus and Lassen and back to Drumroof. I didn't mind the delivering the milk but I didn't like collecting the money much. It was quite uh, lucrative for a few years. I think we got bigger on the farm and we hadn't time. It was a lot of work washing bottles and bottling the milk every day. My friend David and I, we would travel miles and miles up amongst the heather and bracken, up the dry gutters and we used to climb the sides of the deep peat craters in search of adventures. So what were these peat craters? The peat, the peat had been dug out in abundance for the chemical works right. and it was difficult sometimes to get up the sides. Uh, some of them were stepped, others weren't, but being small children we found a way. I can remember vividly lying on our stomachs, looking over the peat craters, watching the rabbits play, watching the adders bask, and perhaps on both sides of your head you would have sundews of various types. There would be cotton grass, there would be heather uh, it, of various types. It was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. <laughs> 